day and what to expect with this just announced Friday of anger. Well, when we compare the situation to what took place yesterday, it was certainly a significantly calmer, but that does not mean that this crisis is by any stretch of the imagination uh, over. The streets of Cairo were pretty empty throughout the entire day, of course. Now there is that curfew in place, second night in a row that we've had the curfew here. State of emergency also, of course, to be lasting for about a month. You were talking about the attacks on the churches there. Well, actually, we've been hearing various reports that the number is much, much higher, at least 30 to have been attacked across the entire country. And many people were warning prior to this violent crackdown that this would be the type of spillover, ripple effect violence that the country could have expected to see in the aftermath. One of the many reasons why people were trying to urge the government to continue to pursue a peaceful solution. The Ministry of Interior also, Anderson, announcing following a number of attacks on police stations and on government institutions that it would that it had authorized its troops to use lethal force if such attacks took place once again. Of course, everyone very anxious about what tomorrow's going to bring, especially with those mass demonstrations being called for uh, by the Buz Muslim Brotherhood. Those expected to take place after a noon prayers, not too far from where we are right now, Anderson. Uh, Mona, you say you support neither the military nor the Muslim Brotherhood, but if you support neither, then, then who are you left with? And is that part of the problem right now, that there's, that there's basically these polarized sides in Egypt? Yeah, absolutely, Anderson. I mean, I support neither side, and I, but I want to make it very clear that I unequivocally condemn the mass killing by security forces yesterday and condemn the attacks on churches across the country. And our biggest and most urgent need right now is to stop the killing and stop the blood, because in one day yesterday, almost as many Egyptians were killed in that one day as they were during the 18 days that took us to get rid of Hosni Mubarak. Now, we do need somebody who's an alternative to the Muslim Brotherhood in the military because we're constantly pushed to choose between the two. And I don't think that Egypt needs to choose between the two. Egypt is much bigger than that. And we need people. Now, I personally support the decision by Mohammed al baradai yesterday to resign in protest at the mass killings and the violence because I think he took a principled stand and we need more voices like him, which exist. I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood and the military are not the only Egyptians around. There are many more. And we need to hear someone like Baradai and someone in that camp that, that, that says, I reject violence from the security forces and the violence that we've heard coming from the Muslim Brotherhood and their supporters, and say that for the sake of Egypt, the, 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 the path we should be walking towards is the path of freedom and the path that recognizes all rights. Our revolution did not call for an Islamist state, nor did it call for military rule. Robin, the Egyptian ambassador to the U.S. says that this is the most serious juncture Egypt has been in the last 30 years. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and this is a real challenge for the Obama administration. Uh, after all, the military has been the cornerstone of U.S. relations uh, since the peace treaty, since the uh, Egyptians walked away from their relationship with the Soviet Union. All of the presidents since the uh, monarchy was ousted in 1952 have come from the military until Mohamed Morsi. And this is a moment where the United States really has to review its relations with Egypt, with the military, many of whom were, uh, whose leaders were trained in the United States. It has some tough decisions to make. What the president said today uh, had some tough words, but the action was actually rather symbolic. Uh, there are tough questions about not just aid, but actually whether the United States has an, uh, enough influence to really make a difference, because the military is basically kind of sticking it to Washington and has indicated it's prepared to take its own action, irrespective of what its allies uh, or the international community has said in condemning the, what's happened in the last week. Uh, Ari, President Obama said today in part that the U.S. doesn't take sides with any particular party or political figure in Egypt. Uh, do you buy that? Well, that's the right thing to say, and we should not take sides. We have two bad sides to take a choice between. Um, but we did take sides previously. Remember, this is the president who said that President Mubarak must go. And so we, we have weighed into Egyptian affairs previously, just two years ago. Uh, and now we're the consequences, not of what we did, but what the Egyptians are going through are on ourselves and on all the world. Now, I think this is like the French Revolution, Anderson. We're, we're going to see this shift back and forth between one pole to the other pole. In the case of the French Resolution, Revolution, it was the monarchists against all the revolutionaries here in Egypt. It's going to be the Muslim Brotherhood against the military. There's not much in the middle. And that's, I think, the, the reality of dealing with Egypt. The United States' role is going to have to be symbolic because we don't have much influence in Egypt. It's a very difficult path for any president to walk. Uh, but at the end of the day, as much as we don't like the military, 
The last thing any of us should want, frankly, is for the Muslim Brotherhood as Americans to return to power in Egypt. Peter, you, Peter, what do you, you know, think? honestly, it's amazing to me how, how people like Ari, who, who said during the Bush administration that the agenda was supposed to be democracy, uh, when Islamist parties that uh, win all of a sudden say that they're, the most important thing is to prevent Islamist parties from winning. I don't think Morsi was no. a good leader. I don't, he wouldn't have been my first or second or third or fourth candidate. But the important principle here is that the United States does not rule out any political party from being able to run in elections. We simply support the principle of free elections, rule of law, and minority rights. And the Obama administration was played by the military, which made this big show of the idea that it would overthrow Morsi and bring a return back to democracy. Very rarely does that really happen with military coups. It didn't happen here, and we should have been much stronger against uh, Ari, it. I want you to be able to respond Does to that. Yeah. I agree with the principle that he laid out, but it's also important to note that the Muslim Brotherhood did not govern in anything close to a democratic fashion. And the and risk the in the Arab Middle East is that people come to power through democracy or through coup, and then they become even worse. And that's what happened in Iran in the late 1970s. And that's not something we want to see happen in Egypt. That would not represent peace. It wouldn't represent stability. It wouldn't be good for anybody in the region. R Robin, how... Where do you see this going? I mean, it's impossible, I guess, to, to, to predict, obviously, but... but where, where do you see it? What, what options are there? There's some really important turning points that are uh, just in the next few weeks. So first of all, the new constitution is supposed to be announced by next Wednesday, and then it goes to a 50-member committee for review. The 50-member committee hasn't even been formed or announced anyway. And then uh, the Egyptians are supposed to, under the roadmap for the transition back to democracy, to have elections for both a new parliament and a president within six months. Uh, the real danger is that the whole principle, the whole process that has been laid out, even in the last month since the coup, is likely to be eroded, uh, that events on the ground will overtake the, uh, any effort to get back to the democratic process. And the danger is also that the military net will not broker opposition or other voices when it comes to what's in the new constitution, who's allowed to run for parliament or for the presidency. The exclusion of the Muslim Brotherhood or any other party, uh, whatever their political stripes, would be would show that the military is being once again very exclusive in power and that democracy is a dead issue in Egypt again and that's a danger and a precedent for the whole region that's very dangerous you, you know Mona I, I think back to early on people like Fuad Ajami who was on this program said that those who rose up in protest against the Morsi government would rue the day they invited in the Egyptian military for a solution I, is there a sense of regret there for, for some um, I don't think that the military ha should play any role in Egyptian politics, Anderson. I think one of the main goals of our revolution was to end military rule, and we did by telling staff, the military junta, that they had to step down, which they did. But the Egyptian military, and this is very ironic, the Egyptian military over the past year that we had Morsi as a president, it was strengthened by Mohamed Morsi, the president of the Muslim Brotherhood, basically, because the only two institutions that he strengthened during his time were the military and the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, I personally wish that the military had not had anything to do with the protests of June 30th. But it's very important to understand that General Sisi, will, we will face him with as much opposition as we showed to Morsi and as we showed to Mubarak. Because as I said, we didn't call for an Islamic state or for military rule. And, and this irony of the Brotherhood striking a deal just with the military and the military now turning against them, this is why I keep insisting that there are more Egyptians outside of this dichotomy. I think the outside world thinks that we're all firmly down these two camps. We're not. We're much more complex than that. But the but rule of law and basic rights and human rights for everybody in Egypt, this is what we should be talking about, not choose between the military and choose between the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, Arwe, you were there in 2011 during, during the, those uh, sort of heady days of, of the revolution that overthrew Mubarak. It just on a personal level, what is it like on the streets? What are you hearing from people? What, 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 is, what is it like there, especially with this day of anger called for tomorrow? What to expect? There's a lot of tension, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of uh, frustration, and there also is, and Anderson, you know, you and the other journalists who covered 2011 will remember it quite well, a lot of anti-journalist uh, sentiment, everybody quite angry at the press, especially uh, the foreign media, no matter which side of this current uh, crisis they are on. But, you know, most people, they just really want to see the country moving forward. The most critical thing for so many here right now is the economy. People really want to begin to live a decent, normal life. But as so many Egyptians have been telling me, key to that, key to redefining 
thing, this, this new Egypt, is going to be for the population to begin to learn how to respect the other rather than fear the other. And they need to really figure out a way to end this, this culture that seems to be perpetuated of demonizing other people quite simply because they don't have the same ideology. All that being said and done, though, Anderson, this is still a country that emerged from 30 years under Mubarak. It's still a country that is trying to redefine and rebalance itself. Arwa Damon, appreciate you being there. Stay safe. Mona El Tahawi, you as well. Peter Beinart, thank you. Robin Wright, Ari Fleischer as well. Let us know what you think. Let's talk about it on Twitter during the break. Uh